Hey everyone, welcome back to Code Throw. In this video, we're going to be going over adding a death animation. And you'll see that this character or this enemy has a hit reaction, which works fine. And his HP bar is one hit away from death. So when I finally finish him off, he doesn't actually play anything. We're going to be using the gameplay ability system using Ninja Bear Studios plugin. In particular, this is going to be the Ninja Bear combat plugin. And you'll see that this character just kind of disappears and doesn't actually play a death animation or even ragdoll. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is first find a death animation. So I was just looking through my death animations and it looks like I'm just going to be using this kind of a simplistic death animation that comes with the ghost samurai animations. Uh, a little dramatic, but I mean, it's fine in this case. He does die forward. Maybe I should look for one where he goes backwards since I'm going to be hitting him from the front. But I'll go ahead and add that in just a bit. So what I want to do is just create an animator montage. So I'll right click, go to create, create and a montage, and I'll just call this AM underscore death, like so. I'll double click to open this up, and you'll see that the section is just called default. I'm gonna call this um, back, just because in this case, whenever this character gets hit from the back, I'm gonna have him fall this way. All right, this one's a little dramatic, but I'll just go ahead and add this for the front one, where if I hit him from the front, He'll just play this animation and die this way. So I'll go up, I'll go back to my AM death or animation montage death, and then I'll look for that animation, and then I'll just go ahead and add this. I'm going to right click up here, add a new montage section, and call this front. And one thing I need to do is head over to montage sections and break this link. So you'll see this arrow sign. Go ahead and click on that, and then click remove link just so they are kind of their own independent animations. And you can add as many animations to this, as many sections as you want. So what we're going to need to do in both of these is add a death section and a ragdoll section if you choose so. So you don't have to do this part, but you can if you want to. I'm just going to go ahead and add a ragdoll right around here as he's falling. So I will go to the add notify, look for ragdoll, add this in. And then I want him to be officially dead just around here, I guess, uh, near the end of the animation. So I'm just going to go to the add notify, look for death, and go ahead and add that. And then same thing for the front animation. I want him to start ragdolling. I guess mid-air is fine. Actually, maybe when he's closer to the ground, like here, like this. I'll right-click, add notify, look for ragdoll. And then he'll officially die a little bit. Let's see. So right around here is good. So I'll add that anim notify of death right here. And then I'll go ahead and hit save. And now, thankfully, Ninja Bear Studios already provides a blueprint for us to configure the death. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just go to my gameplay ability system folder and add abilities. I'll right click, look for a blueprint class, and I'm going to look for the combat ability underscore death. So I'll go ahead and hit select, and I'll just call this GA for gameplay ability underscore death, like so. And I'll double click to open this up. And now it's going to open up this blueprint where it already has an instigator tags filter of combat.effect.death. You'll see the asset tag ability.death is provided and it cancels all these ability tags so the character or the enemy who is dead can no longer use these tags. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the animation provider. You can leave it as combat animation provider if you just have one simple death animation or maybe you're just doing a ragdoll. I'm just gonna change this to directional hits like so. We could also add a hit reaction context in this case. So if I go ahead and hit plus right next to this to add an element to the array, I can look for a context tag. So in this case, I can look for an example called knockback. And if the character knocks back, I can simply just, in my case, I'm just going to reuse the same animation montage. I'm just going to use the AM death, but you could use a more severe or a more of a pushback type animation in your montage and just add it right here. And of course, there's no limitations. This could be another state that you define. You can go ahead and add whatever. Instead of a knockback, maybe you could add um, some type of slam or maybe some kind of aerial type death and so on. So I'll just go ahead and actually delete this because I don't need that. And I'll leave this in here just as an example. So I'll hit compile and save. And now what I need to do is actually scroll down and under the tags here, there's going to be an activation block tag. In this case, I want to go ahead and add a combat.state opportunity victim. So I'll go ahead and hit compile after that. So the reason why we added the combat.state opportunity victim is because this will help avoid conflicts between the death animation and the opportunity system. 
and everything here looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and hit compile and save and actually try this out. So what I need to do now is actually add this GA death over to my ability data asset. So in order to find that again, let's head over back to our scene. Um, I'm just going to open up my third person character blueprint in this case, and then I'll go over to my character abilities, open up the DA underscore ninja like so. And then I will just go ahead and add this in my list of default gameplay abilities. So I'll click this plus sign, expand this array. And now I'll just look for that GA underscore death like so. And now let's actually try this out. So when I go ahead and hit play, let's try to kill him. See if he actually plays his, uh, his death animation. So I'll hit him once. He has a hit reaction. He's not dead yet. Hit him another time. I think I have to hit him two more times. One. And now when he dies, let me try to make this more cinematic. Boom. He died and he fell back because we attacked him from the front and then he disappeared. So that's really good. That looks actually pretty perfect. So let me try to hit him from the back now. Hopefully the directional hit will work exactly how we want it to. So now I'm going to go over behind him and when I attack him, it doesn't actually work. So let's learn a bit more about attacker location, hit location weight and the directional hits. So in the Ninja Bear Studio plugins documentation, if you head over to Ninja Combat Ability System Gameplay Abilities Hit Reaction Ability, you're going to see that there is a hit angle calculation that you can kind of see where this is coming from. So if the attacker is directly in front of the enemy, the, the angle will be zero degrees, 90 degrees being on its left of the enemy and negative 90 on the right. And then 180 will be directly behind it. So let's go ahead and play with these settings, knowing what we know and go ahead and try it out. All right, so now that we've learned about the attacker location, what I did was change the animation provided to directional hits. And because I wanted to come from my character or my player's direction, I changed attacker location weight to one and then hit location weight to zero. So that means it doesn't really matter where I land my attacks on the enemy. It depends on where I'm attacking from. And if I'm front of, in front of the enemy, it'll always play these front animations. And if I'm behind it, if I'm attacking from behind, even if it was kind of like a swing run and I technically hit him from the front, it would still play the back animation because I did attack him while my player is behind him. So when I go back to my scene and hit play, so let me just lower his HP. And because my player is now in front of him and I'm just going to go ahead and hit him from the front, he is going to fly backwards and play that correct animation montage. And now let's try the back one. So I'll go ahead and lower him. My right click is just, or my shield attack is just way faster. So I'm lowering him with that. And now if I just attack him from behind, boom, he'll play the correct animation montage, which is going to be the back one. And that's how you set up your fatal reactions or death animations using Ninja Bear Studios in gameplay ability system. Thanks for watching Code of the Rope. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.